Hello and welcome to this tutorial on broadcast domains. So understanding what a broadcast domain is and, and what it means to a network is important because devices communicate in a bunch of different ways. One such way is by using a broadcast message and this has certain implications on how a network performs. So understanding a broadcast domain fits in really well here and it's something you'll come across quite a lot. So we'll start by taking a look at a definition of a broadcast domain and we'll move into different network devices and how they each define broadcast domains differently. Finally, by doing this, we'll take a look at network segmentation and how that benefits a network and the performance of the network. So let's get started. Okay, a broadcast domain is defined as follows. A group of devices which will receive a broadcast frame from any other member of the same group. Okay, so you have a group of devices and if any one of them sources a broadcast message, every other member of that group will receive it. And that is your domain, your broadcast domain. Now keep in mind there are a few types of traffic, broadcast, multicast, and unicast. We're focusing just on broadcast. Check out the tutorial on those traffic types if you're curious. But here, just know that a broadcast message is a device, is, sorry, is a message which is sent to every other device in a particular group. And there's usually a specific MAC address, a layer two address, and a layer three, an IP address for the broadcast message. So a frame is sourced from one device, it's sent to the network, and it's copied, and it's sent to every other device in the broadcast domain. Okay, so that's your domain, and then that is the type of message in the domain. Broadcast messages and broadcast domain. So we've gotten the formal part out of the way. Now let's take a look at the devices and how they create broadcast domains. This is our local area network, and we have a hub with two PCs on it. It's connected to one port on the router, and then we have a switch connected to a different port on the router, and it too has two PCs hanging off of it. So the first thing to note about broadcast domains and the devices involved is that routers are the only ones which create multiple broadcast domains. So hubs, switches, and bridges, although we don't have a bridge on this diagram, they create a single broadcast domain. So when they receive a broadcast message, they simply forward it out every connected port, whereas routers do not do that. So here, it would look something like this. That would be one broadcast domain, and this would be a second broadcast domain. If we look at each of the broadcast domains, we'll take a different color here. If this PC sources a broadcast message, the switch is going to forward it out every connected port. And the hub will do the same thing. It'll forward it out each port as well. However, the router is not going to allow that broadcast frame to cross over. And it's the same thing in the other direction from the switch. Now there's something to note about switches. Switches can be configured to use multiple VLANs and check out the tutorials on VLANs if you haven't yet. So there is uh, more uh, options available with a switch when it comes to broadcast domains, but generally speaking, switches only create a single broadcast domain. Okay. So take into consideration when you're thinking about broadcast domains, the benefits. So in this, in each broadcast domain, every device is required to receive the broadcast message and to process it. So that can take up cycles on each of the different devices. So if you have one giant broadcast domain, if a single PC sources a broadcast domain uh, message and there are 500 PCs or 1,000 PCs in that domain, every single one gets a copy of the message and it has to process it and, and do something with it. So not only do you take up resources on every device in that broadcast domain, but you're also using up bandwidth as well. So by segmenting your network into smaller broadcast domains, you get around some of those problems. You do not have broadcasts being sent out to every device on the network. Okay, It gets a little tricky of when to decide to uh, segment a network, but that's something that gets more into the network design considerations. But keep these uh, characteristics of a broadcast domain in mind. Okay, so let's summarize what we've gone over. 
So we know broadcast messages are messages sent to all members of a broadcast domain. And so likewise, a broadcast domain is a group of devices who will receive a broadcast frame from any one of the devices in the same group. And we know that only routers create multiple broadcast domains. Switches, hubs, bridges, they simply forward broadcast messages. And finally, we took a look at some of the considerations when it comes to broadcast domains and network design. Large broadcast domains can be problematic given all the resources tied up and bandwidth used to get that broadcast message out there. Segmenting your network into smaller broadcast domains alleviates some of those problems. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about broadcast domains. Thanks for watching.